Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church. I welcome you to our video service for Sunday, October 18th. I hope that you're uh, staying warm during this uh, cold, uh, wintry weather that has descended upon us. It should be a good morning to uh, stay inside and uh, watch our video service. My sermon this morning uh, is entitled Unholy Heights from Deuteronomy chapter 12, Unholy Heights. And I have a couple songs to sing with you. It Is You by Pete Furler, It Is You, and uh, In Christ Alone by Keith Getty and Stuart Townsend, In Christ Alone. Stay alone. 
welcome you to take your Bibles and turn with me to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the fifth book in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 12. I'll speak from uh, verses uh, 1 to 7, but uh, to begin, we'll just read uh, verses 1 to 3. So Deuteronomy chapter 12, and uh, beginning to read at verse 1. These are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess as long as you live in the land. Destroy completely all the places on the high mountains and on the hills and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their Asherah poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. Father God, we thank you for these words of Scripture, these uh, commands of yours uh, spoken through your servant Moses. And I pray that as we recall them, you will remind us of uh, the right way of worship. For those of us who are in Christ Jesus, Lord, uh, the way that you would have us to worship you uh, truly and uh, rightly. And so I speak pray that you will uh, speak this way uh, to us through these uh, words of Deuteronomy. And I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. In the land of Israel, about 60 kilometers southwest of Jerusalem, lie the ruins of the biblical city of Lachish. It was one of the Canaanite strongholds that Joshua captured and destroyed when Israel invaded the land. Recent archaeological excavations of, La of the Lachish ruins have uncovered the Canaanite city remains, which include a temple and many worship-related artifacts. Among these items, according to a press release, were several unhewn or uncarved standing stones that may have served as representations of temple gods. Earlier excavations have also found figurines of a naked female goddess. Three of these were on clay plaques, and the fourth on a pear-shaped silver pendant or necklace piece. And these Canaanite images and stones are what Moses warns the Israelites about here in Deuteronomy chapter 12. They are the sacred stones and the Asherah, or in Hebrew, the Matseba and the Asherah. They are the unholy images and idols that stood upon the mountain heights of Canaan and that the Lord God commanded the Israelites to tear down and destroy when they entered the land. For you and me in Christ Jesus, the unholy heights are the untrue and ungodly ways of worship we must keep ourselves from. In verses 1 to 4 of Deuteronomy chapter 12, Moses emphatically urges the Israelites when they come into the land of Canaan to destroy completely all the idolatrous shrines on the mountain heights. These are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess, as long as you live in the land. 
Moses tells the Israelites in verse 1 about the many commands he will give them in chapters 12 to 26. And the decree from Yahweh God that Moses first urges upon the people of Israel in verse 2 is that they must destroy completely, or more literally, destroy you shall destroy all the idolatrous high places. Destroy completely all the places on the high mountains and on the hills and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods. The high mountains and the hills are the places where the present inhabitants of Canaan go to worship because they believe that these heights and elevations are where their gods live and reveal themselves. But the Canaanites also imagine that the deities of the land dwell under every spreading tree, or more literally, every green tree, because these trees are so full of life, live so long, and offer such refreshing shade. Break down their altars, verse 3 commands, and these are the stone altars for sacrifices the Canaanites have built upon the high places and under the trees. Smash their sacred stones and burn their Asherah poles in the fire. The sacred stones are the matseba, or the pillars of rock that worshippers have erected on the high places to mark the site where their revered God may be found. And the Asherah are wooden poles carved with the bodily features of a woman and raised at the worship sites to represent the goddess of fertility named Asherah. The Matseba and Asherah. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. The Lord God now commands his people through Moses. The Israelites must destroy the shrines, the images, and the stones of the Canaanite gods and leave no trace or reminder of them, so that the idols will not tempt the Israelites themselves and lead them astray spiritually. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. Verse 4 says emphatically, The Israelites must not worship any of the false gods of the Canaanites. And not even for the sake of their own God, Yahweh, should the Israelites raise altars and build shrines on the high places throughout the land. picture of Shiloh, the first place the Israelites uh, worshipped in the land and where they set up the temple or the, the tabernacle or sacred tent. But if not on the mountain heights and the idol shrines, where should the Israelites worship the Lord their God? And this question the rest of chapter 12 answers. But, verse 5 next commands, you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all your tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. When the Israelites come into the land of Canaan, Yahweh their God will choose for them a certain place among the tribes and their allotted territories where all his people should gather to worship him rightly. The ever-living I Am will reveal to his people where his dwelling place among them should rest. There he will put his name, or the revelation of who he is. And there the priests and Levites will erect the sacred tent of meeting, or tabernacle, built for the presence of God. To that place you must go, the Lord commands through Moses in verses 5 and 6. 
There bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, what you have vowed to give and your free will offerings and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. To the heavenly chosen place and the sacred tent that will stand there, the Israelites should bring all the sacrifices, the tithes or tenth parts, and the offerings Yahweh has commanded them through Moses to give. There in the presence of the Lord your God, verse 7 further commands about the one place of worship for the people of Israel, you and your family shall eat and shall rejoice in everything you have put your hand to because the Lord your God has blessed you. In the presence of the Lord your God, at the, tent, at the sacred tent of meeting, and the place where Yahweh has chosen for his name to dwell, that is where the Israelites should go to worship their true living God, to offer their sacrifices and share their bounty with the priests and Levites and to rejoice together for all their heavenly provider has blessed them with. In the presence of the Lord your God, at the place where the heavenly I am will choose for his dwelling, there his people should gather to rightly worship him. And for you and me in Christ Jesus, where is that one place for right worship? The danger of worshiping wherever we please is that our worship can readily go amiss. Our praise, our prayers, and our thoughts about God can be misled by wrongful notions and deceived by ungodly desires. Worship in our own private place and in our own misguided way can even become idolatrous, so that we worship created things rather than the Creator Himself, and we exchange the truth of God for a lie, as the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1, verse 25. Nature is a created thing. Mother Nature is the love of many outdoors-minded people. And I have had a friend tell me, Nature is my church, because that is where he prefers to worship. That is his sanctuary or holy place. And that is where he feels God best speaks to him. But how well does my friend hear from God? Nature does speak to us about the heavenly creator, his might and majesty, his greatness and glory. And this sort of inspiration I myself gladly receive from the mountain heights. But nature does not tell us the gospel truth about Christ Jesus, his death and resurrection, and our eternal salvation by believing in him. Nature does not display the scriptural word of God and the biblical texts of the Old and New Testaments. Nature does not reveal what God has spoken through his prophets and apostles. So if we worship only in nature and rely on natural revelation alone, we will not hear the whole truth about God. We will not hear all that he himself has spoken and revealed to humankind about who the Almighty is and what he has done for us. And we are more likely to go astray in how we worship and what we revere. If we worship in nature alone, on the mountain heights, along the forest trails, and beside the rivers and lakes, we are more likely to start worshiping 
created things like the Matseva and the Asherah and the idols the ancient Canaanites worshipped and erected on unholy heights. In our own minds and hearts, we may hold on to false understandings about what the Almighty is like. And we may harbor misguided notions about how we should worship and serve the master of our souls. We may let ungodly high places stand in our own thoughts. But what does the Lord our God urge about such unholy heights? Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their Asherah poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. And you and I must similarly take care to know our Heavenly Father rightly and to honor and serve His Son Christ Jesus in the way they have revealed for us. Here's an ancient church at Shiloh where the tabernacle once stood. And how do we do this? How do we ensure that we understand God rightly and serve the Lord pleasingly? Where is the one place of worship our Heavenly Master has appointed for us, like the place He chose for Israel? Where has Christ chosen to dwell among us? In His Church, yes. Among the saints who gather in the name of the Savior Christ Jesus. And within the living temple that God inhabits by his spirit and that he is building to dwell in for all eternity. But there are many churches, hundreds and thousands of churches all around the world on mountains and in valleys and in cities and in towns, large churches and small, traditional and charismatic. True, of course, but what does the New Testament teach about the one body and one church of Christ? There is one body and one spirit, says Ephesians 4, verses 4 to 6, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So yes, there is one church and one way of worshiping God the Father in the name of the Son Christ Jesus and through the presence and ministry of the Holy Spirit. And every church and every local assembly of believers in Christ is an integral part of the one true church and a vital member of the whole living body. And when you and I and other members of Christ gather together for worship and for ministry to one another, there our Lord and Savior is in our midst by his Holy Spirit. And just as he has promised for his gathered followers, for where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. There am I with them. And in this way of his heavenly presence among us, whenever we meet for worship, the Lord Jesus puts his name among us and the revelation of himself to us. Much as the Lord God told the people of Israel that he would choose a place among their tribes and put his name there for his dwelling. 
And in the way that Moses urged the Israelites in the promised land to seek out the place the Lord your God will choose, you and I who belong to Christ, we seek out his dwelling place among us. And we gather for worship with our fellow believers and saints. And by doing this, we are sure to rid ourselves of the unholy heights and wrongful worship that readily mislead us. But what about the way you and I are worshiping right now during this pandemic? We are not gathering in one place. We are not assembling at our church. We are all in our homes with our families, our housemates, and our health safety cohorts. Of course, these are extraordinary times. And we are trying to follow the commands of the Lord Jesus to love one another and our neighbors as ourselves by caring for the health safety of each other and preventing the spread of the sometimes deadly coronavirus. But we are also meeting via these video services. We are not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. And we are not gathering on unholy heights and worship, worshiping at the idolatrous shrines of false gods and goddesses. With our computers, tablets, and TVs, we are joining our hearts, our minds, and even our voices in reverence for God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in readiness to hear from their scriptural word for our lives. So even in the separation and the isolation of this health crisis, we are joining ourselves, our minds, and our spirits to the one Church of Christ, to the one faith he has founded, and to the one way of worshiping in his name. And by being faithful in this worship way, you and I are also fulfilling the goal and the intent of the command of the Lord God here in Deuteronomy 12. But you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all your tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. To that place you must go. And here you and I are, gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your Son Jesus. We thank you for our wonderful and merciful Savior. We thank you for the salvation that he has made for us. We thank you for the hope and assurance of eternal life and a resurrection with our Lord. And Father God, we thank you as well for your church, the church that you have uh, raised uh, within this world, the church that is united by its one faith in Christ and uh, inhabited by the one Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this uh, united place uh, of uh, living worship, Father God. And Father, I thank you that even during this uh, pandemic time, we can gather uh, via the internet and join our hearts and our minds and our voices and our spirits together in uh, worship of you worship in the name of your Son and our Savior Christ Jesus. And Father God, I pray at this time for healing. I pray healing for the nations. I pray healing for our nation of Canada, for our province, and for our community. 
Father, I pray for those who have uh, this past week uh, uh, tested positive for the coronavirus. I pray uh, for their healing. I pray for their recovery. And I pray for the safety of all of us as well. I pray that you will keep us uh, safe from the virus and I pray that you will uh, help us to prevent uh, the further spread of it. Father, we ask for your healing. We know that you are a loving and kind Father and we ask in the mighty name of our Jesus, we ask for your healing, your protection and uh, for your wellness and uh, for the blessing and presence of your Holy Spirit with us and among us. And so we pray in the wonderful and merciful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Stay. 